This week, Parashat Matot Masay, Double Parsha, we talked again about the deal that the two and a half tribes make. And basically, we asked a very basic question. We're very used to hearing this idea of two and a half tribes that ask Moshe to be on the east side of the Jordan. And we never stop and ask ourselves, what is that half a tribe doing there? Why did we take a tribe and split them? What is going on? Did they have a fight between them? Were they not getting along? Why did we take one tribe, Menashe, and split it in two and put half over there on the other side of the Jordan River? Yeah, when we took a deeper look into the Pesukim, we saw something fascinating. The half tribe isn't even there at the beginning. They sort of just pop up at the end of the story. This is telling us something very, very serious about what's going on. Exactly, exactly. If you think you know the story of the two and a half tribes, trust us, you probably don't. So you want to make sure you take a look because there's such a deep reason, so much meaning to this idea that it's half a tribe, Menashe, joined the two tribes of Uven and God on the other side of the Jordan River. So make sure you take a look. Hope you enjoy it. So yeah, it's new week. Double Parsha this week, Parashat Matot Masay. Last year, we talked about the deal that the two and a half tribes have with Moshe Rabbeinu in Parashat Matot, when Shevet Reuven, Gad, and Chatsi Shevet Amnashe come over to Moshe and tell him, we want to stay in the land that we already conquered. We want to stay on the east side of the Jordan River. Moshe gets upset and they make a deal that now they will have to lead the army into battle and only after conquering the entire Eretz Yisrael, that's when they will be able to return to their families. This year, I want to talk about the fact that we all call this the two and a half tribes, the Shnayim Vachetzi Ashvatim. But when you think about it, what is that half a tribe doing there? Why is Shevet Menashe only half a tribe? What happened to the other half? Why is that a split tribe? You know, we're so used to the fact that we call them the two and a half tribes, the two and a half tribes. Did we ever stop and ask ourselves, hold on a second, why is there only half a tribe over here? Why did we take this tribe, Menashe, and split them in the middle? So we talked about the beginning of the deal, the Psukim, why they came to Moshe, what did they really ask for last year? This year, I want to try to understand understand who's doing the deal. Why is this half a tribe there? What happened to the other half of Menashe? What's going on? Is there some internal conflict between the tribe over there that they have to split? What is going on? Why do we have two full Shvatim and then half a tribe that sits on the east side of the Jordan? Yeah, that's interesting. And actually something fascinating, most people don't even notice, is that that half a tribe just shows up from nowhere. As you said, in our minds, we have the two and a half Shvatim. But when we look in the Psukim, that half a Shevet is gone. All we see is the two Shvatim. We have Reuven and God. They come to Moshe. They ask what they ask. They make a whole deal with Moshe. They have a whole ceremony where everyone sees this deal that they're making with Moshe. What about Menashe? Where are they? Oh, they're not there yet. They show up later. When Moshe comes and gives the land to Reuven and God, suddenly we see, oh, and he also gave it to half of the Shevet of Menashe. What? Where did they come from? They aren't part of the deal. They never promised that they're going to fight. How could you suddenly throw them into that deal without them being there in this whole story and where did they come from and why are they there? But I think this question is actually the answer. Because maybe, as opposed to what we see Reuven and God being sort of the problem, again, they bring something that Moshe isn't so happy with, only once making this deal and somehow ensuring that they stay connected and they fight with all of Am Yisrael and they don't just sit back and enjoy their land and send the rest of the nation into the land to fight. The fact that they stay connected and responsible, maybe Menashe isn't part of that because Menashe isn't part of the problem. Menashe are part of the solution. Maybe Menashe, just like we see in the Psukim, never came up to Moshe and asked for this. It was Moshe who asked Menashe to do this. It's Moshe who suddenly brings in Menashe into this story because Moshe sees, yes, they agreed and they promised and we made a deal here, but Moshe is still worried. And Moshe feels that to ensure this deal happens and to ensure Am Yisrael isn't broken into two halves, he needs Menashe. And I think the first reason why is because he puts only half of Menashe. By putting half of Menashe, what he's doing is he's keeping the two halves together. Reuven and God may think they're their own nation on their own. They're two whole tribes. They're on their own. They're separate from everyone else. And sometimes the tribes fight with each other. They can split up into two. But Menashe, it's the same family. They're cousins. They're much closer. They're part of the same tribe. By Moshe putting half the tribe on one side and half on the other side, he's basically bringing the two halves together, not just of Menashe, but every Everyone else with them. Am Yisrael on the one side and Reuven and God on the other side are brought together by Menashe that are put there as the solution. But I think it's more than that because Moshe could have chosen any other tribe and he chooses Menashe specifically. Maybe it's something about Menashe. We keep hearing about Menashe. We spoke about Menashe's descendants last week with 
Dot Slofchad, who are also from Menashe. There's something unique about Menashe, and maybe it doesn't start in Menashe. It goes back to Yosef. Am Yisrael, for the past 40 years, are carrying the bones of Yosef. Yosef, who had everything in Mitzrayim. He was the king of Egypt, almost. He had anything he needed. Just like Reuven and God think they have here, in this side of the land. They have, you know, place for all their families, and for all their sheep, and for all their money and belongings, and that's great. But Yosef had his his brothers swear to him that they will, when they leave Egypt, they will bring his bones back. He never lost that love for Eretz Israel. He always wanted to go back there no matter what he had on the outside. And we see this continues with his descendants. We see Bnot Slofchad, who we already mentioned last week, who have that love for the land, that desire to have a peace in the land. If you put Menashe over there, you're not going to lose the connection to the land. They continue to want to be a part of their family family on the other side, but also a part of the land of Eretz Yisrael. The descendants of Yosef, who are the reminder to never forget that desire to come back to the land, are what's going to keep Am Yisrael together, both as one people, but also make sure that Am Yisrael don't lose their priorities, as we discussed last year. Part of the problem with what's going on here with Reuven and God, they don't lose, they don't forget their priorities. Even if you're almost the king of Egypt, still the desire to come back to the land. In this way, Moshe, not only only makes a deal with Reuven and God. He also puts their half of Shevet Menashe as part of the solution to ensure that this deal actually happens. Exactly, exactly. Like you're saying, I think it's no coincidence that it's Dafka Menashe from all the tribes that is split in two and put together with Reuven and God. Because like you were saying, first of all, we are surrounded by Menashe with so many stories. Not Tzlovchad last week, not Tzlovchad this week, this week. It's not only the daughters of Tzlovchad, it's actually the whole tribe around. You were saying that they were a very tight tribe, a connected family. Family. And you see this week, the families, the tribe themselves come over to Moshe and say, we're going to lose a piece of our land. And when you look at the map of the tribes in Eretz Yisrael, Menashe had a huge piece of land because they got also on the eastern side of the Jordan and also on the western side of the Jordan. So they had a huge piece of land, yet they were a very connected family. They didn't want to lose out of that land. They didn't want to lose out of this connections of the family, like you were saying. But also, you mentioned that we can't forget that they are carrying with them from Mitzayim Yosef, the bones of Yosef, Yosef who loved the land so much he wanted to go back to the land. He loved the land so much. Even Rashi last week, when Bnot Slovchad approached Moshe, he teaches us a very important lesson. Rashi points out saying that in the Pasuk over there, Slovchad is mentioned all the way back to Yosef and Rashi says there's a reason for that. The reason is to tell us that since we know Yosef was a tzaddik, then everybody else who's mentioned was a tzaddik too. And Yosef had a special love for their land. So too did the daughters of Slovchad have a special love for their land. And this love of the land, like you were saying what made Am Yisrael swear to Yosef that they will take his bones with them towards Eretz Yisrael to bury him in Eretz Yisrael. This is what also Yaakov Avinu promised Yosef. I will give you an extra piece of land because Yosef loved the land so much. This is also what Moshe Rabbeinu blesses, gives the bracha to Menashe and Ephraim together and Yosef at the end of his other bracha. The whole bracha is about the land. The whole bracha is about the wealth, the shefa that will come out of the land because this is Yosef's love, the love that he was in Eretz Mitzrayim Yet he yearned to get back to Eretz Yisrael. He wanted to come back to Eretz Yisrael. And you know, maybe we even see it in Menashe's name. In the end of the day, he calls Menashe, Hinashani Elohim. And like we like to do in our videos, we like to try to understand the Hebrew language. This concept of Nashani, we find it in two different meanings. The Shorish of Nun Shin Hei has two different meanings. First of all, Rashi, back by Gid Hanashe, when Yaakov Avinu gets hurt on his leg by the angel, by the Malach, Rashi explains, why is it called Gid Hanashe? It's called Gid Hanashe. Nashe means something that moved, something that was taken out of its place. That's one explanation. The other explanation we find in Tehillim several times, the concept of Nishiya, of being forgotten, something that is forgotten, something that nobody remembers, something that nobody thinks about anymore. And taking these two explanations of the Shoresh Nun Shinei of Nashani, maybe this is what Yosef is telling Menashe. First of all, I was taken out of my place. I was taken out of my home, my father's home, and I was put here in Mitzayim, but I'm out of my place. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Number two, I'm not forgetting that. I am constantly reminding myself not to forget it, not to forget that I was taken out of my home, that I was taken out of my place. This is who Menashe is about. And maybe this is really why Moshe Rabbeinu is attaching Shevet Menashe to Ruven and God, to make sure that they keep on remembering and never forgetting that they are not in their place, that they are not connected to all of Am Yisrael who live on the western side of the Jordan, who live by Yerushalayim, around Yerushalayim, around Mokom Amikdash, because that's where we belong. That's the land Avraham 
Avraham Avinu was promised. Maybe this is why Moshe Rabbeinu is adding that half a tribe of Dafka Menashe because of the love of the land, because the love Menashe had for the land, because the love the whole tribe had for the land, because the love Yosef had for the land, the love that got him to get extra pieces in the land. This is what Menashe ben Yosef is about. And you know, when you look in the Psukim, there's another very, very clear difference between Reuven and God to this half tribe of Menashe. Because when they make that deal in front of all of Am Yisrael and suddenly Moshe Rabbeinu adds this half a tribe of Menashe, the Torah tells us that the tribes of Reuven and God went and built the different cities that they have already conquered back in Parashat Chukat. The same names we find in Parashat Chukat. The same names we find in the beginning of the chapter that Reuven and God are eyeing. These are the names that they are building. But then, once they are done building, the Torah moves on to the half a tribe Menashe and tells us, first of all, that the sons of Menashe, Machir and Yair and Novach, all went and conquered the lands and then they built them and then they gave them the names. Maybe telling us something very important that we mentioned last year's video. Last year's video, we pointed out something very interesting, that when Reuven and God come over to Moshe and they tell him about the desire to stay in that land over there, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't get upset about the fact that they don't want to go into the land. He gets more upset about the fact that they're going to make Am Yisrael afraid to fight the wars that I needed in order to conquer the land and basically do what the Meraglim did 40 years ago. They would scare Am Yisrael out of fighting for their land. That's what we see in the beginning of the paragraph when Moshe Rabbeinu straight away says to them, you're going to sit here while Am Yisrael are going to fight. You're going to cause Am Yisrael not to want to fight and be afraid. And maybe this is the point here, Dafka with the Safa tribe of Menashe, where with Sichon and Emori, these two lands that were already conquered, were conquered by all of Am Yisrael together when they fought for that land. However, over here, we see very specifically that each individual, each family individually went and caught their cities on their own. They are proving, they are stepping up to show they are not afraid of the war. They are not afraid to do the hard work in order to conquer the land. Maybe this is another thing the Torah is trying to point out to us over here. The main thing that bothers Moshe was not only the separation in Am Yisrael, not only the rifting apart Am Yisrael, but also the fact that one part is going to scare the rest of Am Yisrael not to fight by them not willing to step up for their army and do what's needed for all of Am Yisrael, even if they don't feel comfortable with what's going on, they still have to step up in order not to frighten the rest of Am Yisrael, comes along the Torah and tells us this is exactly what Menashe did. Not only did they have a deep connection to the land, a connection that will make sure they stay connected from now on, but also they were not afraid to fight for the land, even though it wasn't their land. They still stepped up and fought for the land because this is everybody's land, because they're part of Am Yisrael because they're part of Kral Yisrael. Maybe these two messages are over here in Shevet Menashe and as usual, very relevant for us, for today, for our life and what's going on in the day-to-day -day lives over here. Shevet Menashe is stepping up and showing that even though we have 12 different tribes who want to live in this land, 12 different ideas, 12 different thoughts. Am Yisrael always had 12 different tribes. That's how we started. That's where we are. That's how the land was divided up. There's still everybody stepped up for each other and everybody fought for each other because this land is all of our land together. Is the land of Klali side together. And even though Ruven and God didn't even have to care about what goes on on the western side of the Jordan, they still led the army and they still fought for all of Ami side and were always there. Same thing, so much to learn for us today, for what's going on today. Maybe this is why Moshe Rabbeinu added the half a tribe of Menashe to these two tribes, Ruven and God, to tell us, to show us, to make sure that the tribes stay together, that Ami side stays together. And Ami side is not afraid to fight together for each other. And no matter where you are around the globe, the connection to the the land of Eretz Yisrael will always be there. Beautiful, so true. And if talking about Menashe's uniqueness in keeping Am Yisrael together, there's one other thing about Menashe. Menashe was the firstborn. But as we know, when Yaakov gives the blessing, he gives first to Ephraim and then to Menashe. He swaps his hands around and puts his right hand on Ephraim and then Menashe, even though he's turning things around. And we know how badly that went for Yaakov himself when things were turned around and how Asa didn't take that so well. But Menashe doesn't say a word. Yosef gets nervous a little bit. Menashe is fine with that. And until today, we bless our children with the blessing of Ephraim and Menashe, putting Ephraim before Menashe, and Menashe still being able to accept that. So Menashe also represents that lack of jealousy, that love for his brother, his ability to accept, you know, this is my role. This is what I'm supposed to do. He's not jealous about someone else's role. That's something that so badly we need also today. Menashe, who can keep Am Yisrael together, keep Am Yisrael connected to the land and respecting and loving each other. Very good. Very good. Exactly. So much to learn from this story of the two and a half tribes. So much relevant for us today, but we'll have to end here. 
Also with the daf yomi that's going on, of course, the dafim of Migilat Achurban al Narod Bavel Sham Yisham Nugam Bachinu Bezochen Utzion. The whole idea of these three weeks is to remember the connection to the land, the love to the land, and the love to say, like we mentioned last week with Notzlofcha, the two main messages that they give us. So much more to talk about, but we'll end here. We'll remind the viewers again quickly what we discussed. What we discussed last year, the beginning of this deal of Moshe and the two and a half tribes. What is that all about? We also discussed in Parashat Masay the refuge cities. Arei Miklat. What is that about? Why does somebody who murder have to run right away to the Ir Miklat? Why can't he just be put in prison until his court case? Why does he have to go to the Ir Miklat? What is the connection between running away and the Masaot, the Masay that we find in the beginning of Parashat Masay? We'll link those two videos. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it. Comment below. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and help us grow the channel. And Shkoyach Yetzi. Shkoyach Tuvia. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Sorot Tovot. And Mitzvah Shem will come here.